What will I talk to you about in this video? I will share my latest PET CT results. I will talk to you about, oh, I'll show you my blood work from today. Um, I'll talk to you about starving cancer cells, how many days exactly till they're at their weakest, and then what I am planning on doing to punch them out once they're at their weakest. And um, thank you so much for watching. It really encourages me to continue on my health journey and it, it means a lot to me. Thanks so much. All right, let's get everything out there up front. I had a second all clear scan. Well, not really all clear. There were things that showed up, but it looks like there was no metabolic activity, which means that anything that was there was dead. It could also be some interference. I um, took a high dose of melatonin right before my scan, about 300 milligrams or so, because it helps to protect your body from the radiation, which I've already had a significant amount of. Um, so I don't know if that um, melatonin interferes with how um, things show up on the scans or not, but Hopefully it's another all clear scan. I'm feeling relatively well. Um, about two months after that scan, I had swelling in my neck. And in fact, you can still see a little bit of the um, vein that's kind of popping, popping up there. And after the vein swelled, so did just the surrounding area of my neck. And so I went to the ER and I stayed inpatient for about four days. I was treated for a potential blood clot. They really didn't see a blood clot, but they did see narrowing in some vein um, around my port. So my port might be causing some constriction. I don't really understand it all, but um, I am taking Eliquis, which is a blood thinner. And that's been a little bit of an up and down ride. I I took it for a while, then I stopped because I was going to Acadia National Park in Maine by myself, camping and hiking with no cell service, and I didn't want to cut myself on a twig and bleed to death. So I stopped taking it for a while, a couple weeks, and then um, my legs started hurting. And I was driving for long periods of time and I thought, uh oh, is this like a blood clot in my leg? If you know um, about blood clot risk and cancer, you're at an elevated risk if you have cancer or you are on cancer treatments for developing blood clots. So um, I decided to go back on the Eliquis, uh, did that for a couple more weeks and then stopped again for something else that I wanted to do that was contraindicated on blood thinners. And then my neck started to swell again. So I'm taking blood thinners again, but I need to figure something out because hopefully I'm going hang gliding this week. And my doctor said hang gliding is contraindicated to blood thinners. And it's really um, starting to interfere a little bit with what I want to do with life. And if you have a metastatic diagnosis, maybe you understand me. I just find that I have to decide, you know, um, do I limit what I want to do with life so that I'm more safe but potentially die a long, agonizing, painful death? Or do I do stuff that I love and would bring me joy and really I want to experience things in life um, and it comes with some risk and yes, I may die sooner than I would have died otherwise, but that death might be quicker and I might have had more life lived in that shorter amount of time. So hopefully you understand what I'm what is going through my mind with that. I'd like to show you my latest blood work results. They are actually from today. I had treatment today. I get Zolodex once a month. It's an injection in the belly. The needle is like a freaking pipe. It's like this thick. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but it's really thick. Um, it's, a, um, it's a little implant the size of a grain of rice. And 
it releases a chemical that shuts off my ovaries, which doesn't allow them to produce estrogen. The type of cancer I was diagnosed with consumes estrogen at like 99% or something. Um, so keeping estrogen low is a good idea. Um, there are other drugs that I could take in addition to shutting off my ovaries that would lower my estrogen levels even more, but they would come with additional side effects that I'm not ready to deal with right now, including a lowered white blood cell count. And my white blood cells are already really low. So um, let me show you my lab results from today. In case you're curious. So this first one is my white blood cell count. And as you can see, here's the green bar for its normal high, but uh, mine are pretty down, down here. Oh, is this normal low at zero? That seems, that seems really off. I don't think zero is normal low. Um, it was flagged for me, my white blood cell count, it was flagged as low. Um, and that's just, this was, uh, I was having low blood, low white blood cell counts before the Zolodex. Um, so I can't blame it on the Zolodex, but the additional protocol standard of care for me would be to add on letrozole and a CDK4-6 inhibitor, which um, lowers white blood cells even more and also puts people at an in increased risk for a uh, respiratory infection, which right now we're in, we're still in COVID times. It's uh, November 4th, 2021. Um, I don't wanna do that. So that, and it impacts your heart. And I've been having some concerns about my heart lately. I'm going to go see a cardiologist soon to see if um, they can hook me up to a heart monitor to, to, just to see what's going on. So there we go. Low hemoglobin, low, some other stuff there, low, low. Um, so I have some numbers that are off, but I am going to say that most of these numbers look good to me. Um, this is from today too. That didn't show anything. Oh, something that was concerning to me is my CEA. CEA is a cancer um, mark, tumor marker. And um, I've always been within the normal range, even with full-blown metastatic disease to my liver, like 14 different places in my, in bones, um, skin, large areas of skin, lymph nodes, ovary, uterus. So even with metastasis, my numbers always stayed within the, the normal standard range. But if you look at this, this time, this is today's count. It's higher than it's been since I switched to this new oncologist um, and had my first test with him. It was uh, just February of this year. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, that was a little concerning for me. It still is. Um, my other tumor marker score is still pretty normal. This is when I had metastasis in a bunch of different places. And then this is when I started the Zolodex. Um, so it climbed a little also, but not too much. So anyway, keep an eye out on that. And it's actually uh, reinvigorating me to start implementing things again. When I got my first all clear scan, um, I let the ball drop. I was tired of just only doing things for my health all day. It really was an all consuming thing. It was so expensive, so tiring. And I just got tired of it. I wasn't enjoying life. Um, so I got the all clear and I relaxed a lot, maybe too much. Um, so starting today, I am starting again. And, um, 
one of the hardest things for me is healthy eating. Um, so I'm actually going to go public with it and keep and stay accountable to you for what I'm eating in hopes that that will help me stick to the type of eating that I'd like to do that based on research is the best for people with ER positive breast cancer. So um, for me, that is vegan, whole food, low glycemic, organic. Um, so that's my goal. And I plan to check in every single day and tell you what I've eaten that day. Um, and another important part of the diet piece is um, intermittent fasting. They've got some cool studies on intermittent fasting and people with breast cancer. Uh, this was stages one through three. They didn't include people with stage four breast cancer in this study. But what they found was that people who fasted for a minimum of 13 hours a day which is really not hard if you just skip breakfast. It's really not hard, um, or dinner. You could, you know, cut it out on either end. Um, it's hard at first, but then you get used to it, and then you're not even hungry during that time. So for me, that's been pretty easy. Um, anyway, the study showed that those people had a fifty percent reduction in um, in becoming stage four. So 50% fewer people became metastatic when they uh, fasted at least 13 hours per day. And that the longer you fasted, the more benefit you had. So that's one thing I'm incorporating. I'm gonna try to not eat until noon or maybe later. So today, let's see, last night I ate at, mm, I had tea with honey and soy milk around 9 p.m. And then I didn't eat again today until noon. So that was about 15 hours of fasting. So that was great. And then I made a smoothie with a bunch of greens, frozen blueberries, and um, flaxseed. And not just any flaxseed from the grocery store, but flaxseed that is specifically made, packaged to have a high lignin count, which is really good for people with ER positive breast cancer. The photo, phytoestrogens plug up those estrogen receptors in the cells so that um, your actual estrogen can't get in it because they're already plugged up. And the good thing about the phytoestrogens is that they are a thousand times weaker than um, regular estrogen from your body. So they're plugging up the cells and they're giving the cells a thousand times less estrogen than they would get from your normal estrogen that you're producing, producing in your body. So yes, so frozen blueberries, um, a lot of greens and flaxseed with high lignans, high lignin count and some water. Uh, tried to make it thick so that it could be like a, an acai bowl base. And then I, on top, I put fresh blueberries, nuts, pumpkin seeds, and chia seeds. So all cancer fighting foods, all healthy. It was all organic or mostly organic. And I did sprinkle some organic stevia on top. Stevia is another cancer fighter. Um, so hooray, I can still have something that tastes sweet, even though stevia is a little bit it's like an off-brand sweet but um but i feel like it's actually helping me not like um the other fake sugars or real sugars which really are just not good for your body um so i had that and i had a uh, half an avocado with some organic everything seasoning and um that's all i've eaten today so far i will check in tomorrow and let you know what i had for dinner Okay, so I forgot to mention why I'm choosing a low glycemic diet um, or organic or uh, whole food or vegan. I'm not gonna get into all of it in this video, but at least the low glycemic part, um, it's as good a time as any to talk about it. Cancer cells love sugar, not all cancer cells. So check with your type of cancer to find out what, um, what fuels it. So 
usually it's sugar first and then if you starve it enough and it can't get its sugar it will learn how to feed off of fats or um, proteins and so you have to be real smart about it apparently if you limit the cell's ability to get sugars for 28 days that's when they are the weakest um, so that's a great time to kill them with whatever treatments you're going with but 28 days of no sugar will get them to their weakest point. If you continue with no sugar past the 28 days, they learn how to feed off of something else, off of something you are eating like fat or protein. Um, so just an indefinite no sugar might not be the best protocol for you, um, which is important to know. So I'm going for 28 days of low sugars and then I'm gonna add something else to the mix to help cut them back to size. Maybe a mix of um, high dose vitamin C with doxycycline and azithromycin. Look into those, those studies, they're amazing. They kill over 95% of breast cancer stem cells, which um, if you know anything about the uh, different, gosh, my brain does not work super well these days. If you know anything about the treatment options, the conventional treatment options, the chemos, the radiations, they will kill the fast growing cells, but they don't kill the stem cells. But this uh, protocol with high dose vitamin C, doxycycline and azithromycin actually gets the ER positive breast cancer stem cells. So anyway, this video is long enough for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll upload again tomorrow.